Heather's Style Analysis Heather's was a pioneer for the mean girl trope and the costuming is filled with stylish schoolgirl pieces from the 1980s, such as preppy plaid, structured blazers, pleated skirts and coloured tights. You're beautiful. After so many requests, I finally finished a style analysis on Heather's. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm keeping things simple by only analysing the three Heathers in the movie, excluding the musical. For those of you unfamiliar with Heathers, the plot revolves around Veronica, who is a member of the most popular clique in her high school, but is disgusted by the other girls' cruel behaviour. The popular group is made up of three wealthy and beautiful girls with the same first name. Heather Chandler, the leader, Heather Duke, who struggles with the power dynamic, and the loyal cheerleader, Heather McNamara. It's your turn, Heather. Now, Heather, it's Heather's turn. Despite being the most popular students, the Heathers are feared and hated. Great. Here comes Heather. Oh, Hi, Courtney. I love your card again. Thanks. Veronica is fed up with her antics and longs to return to her old life and intellectual friends. When Veronica and her new boyfriend, JD, confront clique leader Heather Chandler and unintentionally poison her, they stage a suicide. Veronica soon understands that JD is murdering students he dislikes on purpose. She rushes to stop JD while also clashing with the clique new leader, Heather Duke. The costume design by Rudy Dillon largely focuses on signature colours to tell the story. Each of the main characters has one colour that is predominantly represented in every outfit. They also understand how to combine different tones of the same colour in each outfit. Veronica, for example, is always wearing at least one item in a shade of blue. We see how the power balance alters merely by colour psychology. I read an analysis that the colours red, yellow and green were meant to portray the Heathers as traffic lights. Heather Chandler's life stopped, Heather McNamara's life nearly stopped, whereas Heather Duke's life kept going. Heather's is dreamlike from start to finish. As the credits roll, we're introduced to a fantasy sequence starring the film's three Heathers. The surreal beginning introduces the film's ideas and motives, as well as the clothing. Much is made up of Heather Chandler's red scrunchie, which serves as the film's opening shot and will act as its most significant totem. Even their croquet balls match their clothing, a testament to the A-list Mean Girls' highly conformist lifestyles and the establishment of the film's key visual motives. These opening outfits explicitly state the film's themes of status, power, privilege and rigid conformity. The girls' outfits are based on elite prep school uniforms with the strong infusion of female executive power dressing, similar to the costuming in Working Girl, which was released the same year. Fuck me gently with the chainsaw. Do I look like Mother Teresa? Heather Chandler is the ringleader of the Heathers, and her style is very preppy and polished. Her signature colour, red, is heavily featured in every outfit symbolising her power over not only the Heathers, but the entire Westerberg High student body. The colour red at the time was even described as power red. In the cafeteria scene, Chandler wears a pleated red skirt, tie-neck blouse, and plaid blazer that give a schoolgirl vibe, with bow-topped flats which are a classic preppy touch. Throughout the film, Heather wears a red scrunchie, which acts as a symbol of power at her high school. Chandler attends the frat party wearing a red dress with a heart-shaped neckline. Her look is enhanced by white pearls and red lips. Her clothing makes her stand out and separates her from the crowd. Chandler is dressed in a pink dressing gown with a red scrunchie the next morning. Pink is frequently connected with characteristics such as gentleness, kindness and compassion. This reveals a much more vulnerable side of her. Chandler's scrunchie is falling out, which could be an indicator that she is about to lose power. The scrunchie overall symbolises power, and it should be noted that the only two occasions she doesn't wear it are the two times she has no power. First, when she is out of her element at a frat party, and secondly, when she drinks the poison, she removes the scrunchie just as she is about to drink. Heather Duke is initially portrayed as a timid and shy bookworm, but later becomes as disrespectful and vain as Heather Chandler. 
Heather Duke's signature colour is green, symbolising her envy of Heather Chandler, but is later changed to red when she acquires the red scrunchie, indicating that she has taken over Chandler's power and position as head. At the beginning of the film, she wears dark green hues. Dark green is associated with ambition, greed and jealousy. Heather Duke aspires to be as powerful as Heather Chandler. This is evident in her and Chandler's exchange at the start of the film. Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? First you ask if you can be red, knowing that I'm always red. The initial scene has Duke wearing a printed green skirt and a summer cardigan, accompanied as a set with a printed white shirt underneath, showing her family's monetary stability. Her outfits often include Mary Janes, which were a popular preppy choice at the time. Heather Duke's style is similar to Heather Chandler's, but she wears it in her signature green. The cafeteria look for Duke was an iconic oversized green blazer with a Peter Pan collared white shirt, a grey plaid skirt and an olive sling bag. Accessories included diamond studded earrings, with an added fabric on the pocket of the blazer that matched the skirt, showing her wealth and ability to style herself for daily mundane classes, which also goes for the rest of the girls. During the rally in the cafeteria, Heather Duke wears an olive blazer and a black turtleneck. The colour olive green signifies peace, while the colour black represents evil and darkness. This demonstrates how she is putting up a facade, hiding her true feelings. After Chandler's death, Duke is convinced by JD to be the new leader of the Heathers, and gives her Chandler's red scrunchie as a symbolism of passing over power. In this scene, she is dressed in a pastel green blazer with a chrysanthemum flower and silver buttons aligned on either side. Underneath, she wears a white turtleneck symbolising her naivety. The pastel greens help in foreshadowing the transition she is about to withstand. From this point forward, Duke incorporates red accents into her outfits, emphasising the power transfer until she entirely embraces the colour red as her own. Her Mary Janes are gone, which depicted the schoolgirl innocence she previously had. She becomes ruthless and brutal, just like Chandler used to be. Duke fully reveals herself in her final outfit, which features a black blouse, skirt and tights, symbolising her darkness, and a red blazer and scrunchie, representing her power. However, as soon as we get a glimpse of the power she's tasted, it is stripped away by Veronica, who takes the red scrunchie. Veronica! Heather McNamara is Westerberg High's head cheerleader, and possibly the kindest and friendliest of the Heathers. Heather McNamara's signature colour is yellow, which represents her cautious and timid personality. Yellow is a warm colour that evokes cheerfulness. It also conveys honour, friendship and loyalty. Yellow's meaning can also be connected with cowardice. It's also typically thought to be a very unstable and spontaneous colour. Everyone jump off a bridge, would you? Probably. In McNamara's first outfit, she wears a black blazer and a yellow dress with frills, completed with a yellow flower and black belt. In this outfit, she also wears yellow leggings and socks with brown Mary Janes. And just like the other girls, her outfit indicates her parents' wealthy status. In her cafeteria outfit, she looks very similar to the other girls' preppy school outfits. In a yellow blazer and blouse, all the girls adhere to the broad shoulders menswear style jackets their collared shirts buttoned all the way to the neck, and the brooches several of them sport. The four girls are imitating a style that was slightly advanced for their age. They deliberately set themselves apart and everyone beneath them understands that. After Heather Chandler's death, McNamara seems less attached to her colour yellow, as evidenced by her appearance in a purple jumper, indicating her final escape from the control of Chandler. One of the cutest outfits McNamara wears is her yellow cord when Duke announces she's red. I'm red. But this shows that McNamara is back under the control of a powerful leader. Even when she's in her own space, we see her room is full of yellow, including her pyjama set, which could indicate how unstable she is feeling, even in the place she should feel the most safe. My whole life is a mess. The pills she takes are also yellow, which shows how heavily used her symbolic colour is. McNamara is part of the cheerleading squad, so she has activities outside of the group, indicating that she is not as invested in the group as Heather Duke. 
The only time we see McNamara in power red is when she's in her cheerleading uniform, which could imply that she feels more powerful outside of the group. There is also a lot of black in the outfit, which could be showing the darkness McNamara feels inside. If you were happy every day of your life, you wouldn't be a human being, you'd be a game show host. Veronica is the protagonist in Heathers. We see her constant reliance on Blue to be a manifestation of her own depression and disaffection. She's cynical, unmotivated and dissociates herself from her actions and from meaningful connections with others. Veronica is often wearing blue in some fashion, usually in the form of a blouse, skirt or sweater. I won't go into detail of each of Veronica's outfits. Elle Yeah does a really good job in breaking down Veronica's pieces in each scene. I would really recommend you go watch her video, which is linked below, to get the full scope. Heather's overall uses colour to help tell the story. It's filled with symbolism and remains an iconic Mean Girl movie, being fundamental in starting the trope. My sources are linked below if you would like to read further. Some go into detail about JD's style analysis, which are very insightful. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!